Uh, first question I have for you is, what is the meaning of this award uh, at this moment in your career? Well, it is a, it's a great surprise and a great pleasure and a great honor. It's always when one wins one of these awards, one appreciates the fact that one has good friends like John Weeks, who just came to congratulate me, who prepared to put the labor into nominating you. And then when you actually win it, you appreciate the fact that there are people out there who think your life's work, in this case, uh, uh, is worthy of an award. Uh, in this case, I did want to say that since this comes from Spain, Spain is a very special country for me. Uh, my wife was a refugee from Franco, Spain, and I uh, visited many parts of Spain, so it's a double plus for me that it's an award from Spain. Your contributions have opened the door to many different fields. Because of phase transitions are so important, and why are they? how important are they in so many different ways? Well, it's, you know, importance is very much in the eye of the beholder. <laughs> so I'm not sure I would uh, take that. But basically, uh, the world in which we as humans live relies on the fact that the air is easy to breathe, that the water is easy to drink, and that the chair and other things are nice to sit on and solid. And wow. yet we know that if it gets too cold, the water will freeze, and if we heat it up too much, the water will boil. And so we are also familiar with the fact that very everyday matter will change from one form to another form, and so on. So we have to understand those changes. And they're important to the degree that anything we make, anything we have in a refrigerator, anything of that sort, we have to understand the limits. And then if you're curious, and all scientists are curious, then you say, so when it changes from one form to another, what exactly happens? And why does this change and that change? And why does uh, this ice with melt not so soon, and why when I put salt down does the ice melt sooner? And so it's understanding all of those things and some of the more majestic ones that is the challenge. And as a theorist, you still are connected to what happens in the real world and to experiments. And one of the most amazing things on which I myself have worked was the so-called critical point. And so, all right, the ancient Greeks recognized fire, and water, and air, and the solids, the ice. But the difference between water and it, water vapor, if you go up to a high enough pressure and temperature, vanishes at one special point. And this was the so-called critical point discovered over 100 years ago, uh, but a surprise then. And understanding what happens near these special critical points where the transitions are peculiar it was one of the things that I focused on and which has, I think, brought me some of the appreciation that I'm now enjoying. Did you expect the whole branching of fields when you initiated this area? Well, one never knows. Part of uh, any scientific study is exploration. And so you never know when you set out to explore somewhere whether it's going to be a small room or open up into a huge continent. So if one is, likes traveling, likes exploring, as I do, then it's always a pleasant surprise, and maybe not a great surprise, that there's yet another country beyond that, yet another area. Maybe the same uh, tools that have carried you through will help you, maybe they won't. So it was less of a surprise than it might have been, and you, you hear of all sorts of exciting things, and think, well, is that connected? Is there a connection? So I've always wanted to explore and learn more. Life is too short. Do you have a favorite result? Well, I think probably not. I mean, one's, uh, it, one is not, shouldn't be a scientist or be interested in science as an activity unless you actually enjoy the day-to-day -day activity any more than you as a cameraman. You, you have to enjoy the equipment, using the equipment, and you know what comes beyond it is also so. So then when you look back, you may say, well, you know, I was very pleased with that, or that was exciting at the time I did it. Uh, but at the time, 
this is what I'm doing now, you know, this is the race I'm entered in, this is where I'm trying to swim to land, this is where I'm trying to see anything in the fog. And so I don't think of any particularly favorite results. You have recently done research in, uh, is it biophysics? That's correct, yes. And why did you choose biophysics? Well, any scientist is also a craftsperson, and any craftsman hopes they're good at their craft, and they tackle new jobs that they think their current skills may get them to. And then they find, well, actually, this job is a little different. I need a new skill, and so you extend it. And then you say, but this is interesting, so let me see what's necessary there. Maybe I have to learn too many new skills. I'm really not going to be able to, but maybe I can have somebody who's going to come and tell me about it. And so many of the areas into which I have worked, sometimes for only a short period, sometimes for a longer period, is because I heard about an interesting result or I met an interesting person. And in the case of biophysics, my very good uh, colleague in Cornell for many years, Professor Ben Widom in the chemistry department there, sent to work with me one of his graduate students who had just got his degree and worked two years afterwards, so-called postdoctoral years. And one of the things this uh, young gentleman had done, uh, Tolya Kolomaisky, came from Russia, was to uh, apply some ideas he has to the problem of molecular motors, which are the little motors that work inside all our cells. And he had a theoretical discussion at once. Stage, so I said, well, tell me about that, because I always like to learn. And if the person's there, you can say, well, I don't understand this. You know, you can interrupt. So then he said, and we do this. And so I said, well, why did you do that? And he said, well, that, that's the standard. And I said, well, it doesn't, doesn't look right to me. <laughs> So we had an argument, I'm very argumentative, and I said, well, let's think a bit more about it. And we thought some more about it, and we saw that it wasn't correct. But then we went back to, it was generalizing a paper, we looked at that, and I saw, well, this is rather interesting, let's think some more about this. And what they were thinking about ultimately was wonderful experiments in which the experimentalists can take a single molecule, too small to see with a microscope, but they can attach a little bead to it. It has a sort of a tether it pulls along. And you put this molecule down on a track, like a little railroad, and it proceeds to pull this bead along. And you can see the bead in the right sort of microscope. And you pulled it along. And so you saw it pulling along. And you could say, well, let me pull back and see how much force it can exert. And so that invited, well, this is just one molecule doing its stuff. It's never been seen before. What is the theoretical explanation? Is this the right way of looking at it? Is that our right understanding? If this is correct, we should do such and such. And so I found that some of what I knew and some of what I was doing seemed to make progress. And so you get into a field that way. Then you talk to people, you say, well, who are the good people doing the experiments here? Who are the good people doing the theories? If they see something you write and think it's interesting, they say, oh, well, why don't you come and talk to us about it? and so you go and talk to them. So that's the way it goes, and that's the way I was hooked into this field. Is there anything else you'd like to add in? Like maybe where were you when you found out that you were receiving this award? Or, I mean, you know, anything, anything that you, any pertinent information? Well, I was just told I was preparing for a course that I have to give tomorrow. I teach the basic course for the graduate students. There's 32 by the time I add the others in, and probably some others. And it's the first course. I usually like to make the first lecture good. There are various things to hand out. So I was at the Xerox machine when the phone went, preparing handouts and so on for the course tomorrow. And so I had missed a couple of phone calls already from actually my assistant who was going to come and help me in this course. And I thought this was yet another one. So at first I didn't understand why I was getting this phone call from Spain, but then the penny dropped. So that's how I heard of it only a couple of hours ago. Thanks very much for the question. <laughs>